In this video, we're going to complete example one. We're going to complete the square for the expressions below. Now, in order for me to explain what it means to complete the square, we first need to have a discussion about perfect squares. So, an example of a perfect square is a set of brackets such as x plus 3 all squared. Now this is an example of a perfect square in its factorized form. So what does a perfect square look like when it's been expanded? To save time I'm going to use the shortcut here. First of all we square each term separately. So we square the x giving us x squared and we square the positive 3. Now 3 times 3 is 9 so we have plus 9. We now need to find the middle term and in order to find the middle term we multiply the two terms together so x times 3 which is 3x we then double this so we times it by 2 giving us 6x and that's our middle term plus 6x. Now it's really easy to recognize a perfect square when it's in its factorized form because it will just have two terms inside a set of brackets and those brackets will be squared. So how do you recognize a perfect square when it's in its expanded form? Now before I show you how to recognize expanded perfect squares I need to point out that the technique I'm showing you only works for monic quadratics. This is a monic quadratic because there's no number to the left of the x squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the middle term which is 6x and you'll notice that x has a coefficient of 6. Now some of you might have noticed that this 6 came about by doubling the 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to reverse this we're going to halve the 6 and go back to the 3. And the reason we're doing this is because if you look at the 9 at the end, how did we get that 9? Well, we squared the 3. 3 times 3 was 9. So now that we found the 3 by halving the 6, we simply square the 3 to get the 9. Let's look at another expression. Let's say we have x squared minus 4x plus 6. And let's say we're trying to figure out whether or not this is a perfect square. Well, we're going to follow the same process. We're going to halve the coefficient in front of the x, which is negative 4. So half of negative 4 is negative 2. And then we're going to square negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, not positive 6. So we can see that this is not a perfect square. All right, let's get into our examples now. You'll notice for our examples, the last term has been blanked out. And they're asking us to complete the square. What does it mean to complete the square? Well, it means to turn the expression into a perfect square. And we're going to do that by putting the correct number at the end. So following the process, we first halve the 10 for question A. This gives us 5. Then we square the 5. 5 times 5 is 25. We have now completed the square for question A. Now, whenever you complete the square, it's best practice to not only give the expanded form, but the factorized form as well. So we'll put that below. The factorized form will have two brackets that are squared. And because we have an x, the first term will be an x. And remembering that when we halved the 10, we got a 5. That's the second term, plus 5. Okay, we'll now move on to question B. We'll start by halving the negative 12. What's half of negative 12? Well, it's negative 6. And then we square 
the negative 6. Now, negative 6 times negative 6 makes positive 36. So we're going to add 36 up here. Now that we have completed the square, we would like to write it in its factorized form. Here we have an A, so our first term will be A in our set of brackets. And when we halve the middle term, we got negative 6. So we've got to write A minus 6. Now moving on to question C, we want to start by halving the number to the left of the T. Now there's no number there at the moment, which means there's technically a 1. What's half of 1? Well, it's 1 half. Next we need to square our half. What's 1 half times 1 half? Well, it's 1 quarter. Now that we've completed the square, we would like to write it down in its factorized form. Now this time we have t, so our first term will be t, and when we halved the 1, we got 1 half. So it's going to be t plus 1 half, all squared. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 1. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.